Hello, everybody. I'm Ben Vandenberg, Principal Developer Evangelist here at Adobe. And it's getting to the holiday season very soon. And one of the things that we're going to need to send out soon is our bonus letters out to a number of our different employees. Now, one of the challenges that we run into, though, is if we have a lot of employees having to create all of these can take a huge amount of time. So we're going to see in this video how we can use Adobe Document Generation API to generate those documents within Microsoft Power Automate and send those out in bulk using Adobe Sign. So we're going to need a couple of those different tools. We're also going to use Microsoft Excel. If you're not familiar with any of these applications, we'll walk through today, but it's good to have some familiarity with each one of those. So to start off, we're going to uh, sw switch over here to Microsoft Excel, where we can see that we have a number of our different employees listed in here. Now, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to keep it a little bit short and small for all of our different employees here, but we could add a, uh, many more to the list here. We can see that we have the employee name, last name, email, job title, as well as how much they're going to get as a bonus, if they're going to get any shares of the company as part of their bonus, those lucky ones there, and uh, if they have their manager and um, the manager's title there. Now, uh, we'll notice here that there are some, some employees that are going to get more uh, bonus shares than others. Uh, so those letters are going to have to be slightly different for each one of those. Not a problem. Before we get started here, one of the first things that we're going to need to do is um, we're going to need to make sure that our uh, fields inside of here in Excel are going to need to be a table. And you can do that by going to insert here and uh, saying insert table, and it creates as a table. The reason this is important is that Microsoft Power Automate needs that for us to be able to then select that table to iterate through that as we go to our, through our flow later on. So uh, the other thing is, is we have our uh, employee letter here that I showed a little bit before. And uh, it has some of the information that we're going to want to populate into different sections of this letter. Along with that, we also have this section here that we're only going to want to show conditionally to certain employees that get that extra bonus there. So let's have a look at how we do that. So to start off, we're going to go to Microsoft Power Automate and we're going to create a new flow here. We're going to create an instant flow. Now, you can have all sorts of different triggers, but we're just going to create a manual trigger here, and we're going to start it off that way. Then what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, first need to get our table information from Microsoft Excel. So we can click on the next or new step here. We're going to search for Excel. I'm going to choose business here, and we're going to search for list rows present in a table. Once we do that, we can choose uh, the location. In this case, I'm choosing this from OneDrive. I am choosing OneDrive, and I'm going to browse to navigate my file. Um, we can see that it is this Excel file here called bulk send. And once we do that, if we created the table inside of our Excel file, then it should be listed right in here. Here we can see that I called it bulk send. Cool, now that we have that, the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we wanna get the data here, because this is gonna be helpful for us to use as part of document generation in Microsoft Word. And one thing that I find handy in order to do this is if we click on new step, I'm going to search for variable. And I'm going to say initialize variable. And this is just a helpful trick for being able to easily pull data from uh, Power Automate here. So I'm going to just call this my Excel data. I'm going to call this an array because it's going to have many different fields inside of this. And I'm going to choose the list of items, this value uh, one here. Now I'm also going to go up here and I'm going to name this untitled flow here. I'm going to call it 
generate in bulk letters. And I'm gonna click on save. Now let's click on the test button and we're going to trigger this manually. So click on test and say continue and run flow. So we can see that it ran successfully. If I expand out this initialized variable section, we see this long list of the different items in the Excel spreadsheet as the JSON data. Now, the reason that this is helpful is we're gonna use this for tagging our document. So I'm just going to copy one of these elements. So you'll see the uh, bracket here, and then there's a curly bracket. We just wanna choose one of these in here. I'm gonna copy that. Um, make sure you catch before the comma. And we're going to uh, switch over here to Microsoft Word. Now, in Microsoft Word, we have this add-in called Document Generation. And if you're not familiar with that, um, you can go on to Microsoft App Source and you can actually install that within your environment to have this add-in available for you here. Here we can see we have document generation in there. Great. So if you do that right, you'll have the document ge generation button right up here in your ribbon, which you can click on and you can click on get started. Now that code that we copied from Power Automate, we can paste that into there and click on generate tags. And what this does is that takes that and turns it into tags that we can easily place into our document. Here we can see now all of the different columns in our Excel sheet are showing up in here. Beautiful. So um, now what I can do is inside of the document here, um, here's where I want to put the employee name. So I can just select where I wanna put my cursor and we have our field here for employee first name. I could just select that and say insert, and it puts that tag in there. I don't need to learn how to write that tag manually into the document. It does that for me. I can choose the last name here. So let's add that in there. Great. Um, we're gonna wanna add the first name of the employee here. So let's select first name. Uh, we have a couple of other different fields that we want to put in here. So we have a job title that we want to put in. Let's replace that and put in job, employee job title. And we want to add the company. So we can even use the search tags uh, part right here to search for a uh, company. And we see that it pop, uh, finds the, the field that is called employee company and just say insert company and it places that right into there. Um, we have a couple more here. So let's add, say, the bonus that we want to put in here. We'll say bonus. Insert that into there. Um, for our bonus shares, we want to add our bonus shares. So let's add that. And as we're going through this, if we want to preview what this is, is going to look like with that data, we can actually go in here and click on the Generate Document button. And this is going to take the sample data that we copied from Power Automate, and it's going to populate it into the document. So I can click on View Document here. And now it opens up in my web browser where I can see the information populating into there. Beautiful, wonderful. Uh, we have a couple more things that we want to update on this file here. So let's, uh, oops, I closed that. So let's uh, reopen that here. And so we want to uh, add the uh, manager into here. So let's search for manager. We want to put the manager's first name and last name and their title. Great. So let's go back to this uh, share section here where we have the bonus shares that we want to add to this document. And we only want it to be included if the person actually gets a bonus. And we can do that. So if we click on advanced here, this gives us all of our different advanced tags that we can add in here for dynamically adding images, adding lists of items, conditional content, numerical calculations, or Adobe sign tags. 
So if I say conditional content, uh, if we look back in our Excel spreadsheet, we had that bonus uh, section here and bonus shares. And one of these people, Conrad, did not get a, a bonus shares. So we don't want him to see that paragraph. So inside of here, we can select our paragraph. Under select records, we can choose or search for, say, bonus. We can see bonus shares. And we want to say only show this if it, this is not equal to zero. Say insert condition. And that's going to wrap this paragraph with these tags here that say um, it's only going to show this if bonus shares is not equal to zero. Cool, awesome. One more thing that we want to add into this document, we want to add some Adobe sign tags so that uh, each of the different people will sign this document. So we can do that using the Adobe sign tag section here. We can choose how many signers we want to put in here. We're going to say two. I'm going to add one signer, or sorry, uh, the first signer here. And we're going to choose a signature block. And I'm going to say insert Adobe Sign tag. Now, when I upload that to Adobe Sign, it's going to know exactly where it needs to place that signature for that document. Pretty handy. If we want to make this signature tag a little bit bigger, um, Adobe Sign text tags, the size of this is based on, or the height of it is based on the height of the first character in the tag. So if we make this a little bit larger, that'll make it a taller tag in there. Now uh, we have a second place where we need to uh, have a person sign. So let's switch this to second signer and we can say insert tag and it inserts that tag in there. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just because we don't need to take the entire page. Um, and we want to add uh, the employee's name here. So again, we can go back to our tags here. We can set the first name and the last name. Great. So let's uh, do a quick preview of what this is going to look like one more time. So if we switch over here, we can see that all the information has been populated in there. Everything is looking good. Um, we have uh, two things that I see here. I need to add a, a, add a date field here, and I want to add a comma after that. So we can just go in here. Now, what I'm going to use here is a, an Adobe Sign Date tag. And the reason that this is helpful is because it will place the date dynamically based on which uh, date I actually send this template out. So I'm going to choose my select uh, template for field type and say date. And we're going to say, uh, scroll down here, say insert Adobe sign text tag. So that's set up there. Um, I'm going to just remove the format here. We just can use a default format. And uh, then we wanted to add that comma there. All right, so we're good. We can save this. I'm saving this automatically to OneDrive. And now the next step, we're going to uh, go over and update the rest of our Power Automate flow. Okay, so we're, let's click on Edit here. And we're going to add our next step into this. Um, we can actually remove this initialized variable here. So let's just remove that. We don't need that anymore. We're going to first need to get the content of our, our template. So I'm going to say new step. And I have this stored in one drive. So I'm going to search for one drive. And I'm looking for an action here called uh, get file contents or content. Um, you can use get file content or get file content using path. Each one of those are helpful for different reasons. If I'm going to use the same template over and over again, get file content becomes very helpful. If I'm going to make this a little bit more dynamic, like I want to choose as part of when I initiate this, I want to enter a value or something like that, then uh, con uh, file content using path tends to be a little bit more helpful there. So let's use get file content. 
And I'm going to now navigate OneDrive. And I'm going to choose my offer letter one here. Cool. So we have our template that we've selected. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to iterate through each of the rows inside of uh, our Excel table. So let's click on new step and we're going to say um, control and we're going to say apply to each. And under the selection here, we're going to want to use the value, the list of items coming from Excel here. Great. So inside of this apply to each, we have two things that we need to first do, which is we need we want to generate a document. I want to save a copy of that document to OneDrive just for reference, and um, we'll start there. So let's click on add an action. And we're going to search for Adobe. You can see all of our different uh, actions show up here for us to use. I'm going to choose Adobe PDF services. And inside of here, you can see all of the different actions that are available as part of Adobe PDF services for creating PDFs, converting, protecting PDFs. All these are actions that you can use. In this case, we're going to use generate document from Word template. Once we do that, we can uh, set a template file name. Um, now, as long as it ends with docx, this doesn't actually matter too much. So I'm going to just call this file.docx, although you can also pass it from the previous action if you want to. Um, the merge data uh, section here, we're going to um, scroll, scroll down here. And um, what we want is we want the current item. So I'm going to search in the dynamic content here for current item. And that's going to pass just one of the items that's relevant for that specific employee into the template. And for the template content, we're going to choose our file content uh, from OneDrive. Next, we want to save maybe a copy of this to uh, OneDrive. So I'm going to again search for OneDrive here. And I'm going to say create file. Let's go in here and I have a folder here that is called letters inside of OneDrive, which is where I want my letters to be stored when they get generated. And so for the file name, um, let's use a couple of the different values from the Excel spreadsheet to populate this in here. So we're going to take the employee last name. We're going to say underscore first name and uh, one of the things that I find sometimes helpful, particularly because I have to do a lot of demos, is um, I want to make the names absolutely unique. So I usually go over here to expression and I use one called UTC now, uh, which basically gives the time exactly at that moment in time when the process gets generated. And then the output of this is going to be a PDF document. One important note here is if you click on advanced options in here, you can actually choose whether you want to generate a PDF document or a Word document. And depending on what uh, you need to, you want to generate, maybe if you want to still edit those documents, creating a Word document make, might make more sense, but you have that option in there. We're going to use the PDF here. So if we go back to the create file here, we're going to go then uh, use the file content from the get file content. Nope, sorry, that was not right. We're going to use the output file content uh, from our action up here. So let's uh, make sure that that works. So let's save and we're going to click on test. And I'm going to run from a previous. Actually, we're going to run from manually here. I'm going to say continue and say run flow. So let's see how this works here. So it gets all the information. It's applying to each. So now if I switch over to OneDrive and I go to my letters, I can see the first one was generated there. So we can open that up. Beautiful. Everything is looking great. Um, 
Now let's have a look at some of the other ones that have been created. All right, all of them have been, been created. Now if we did this right, then the last one won't have the actual bonus uh, paragraph in there. So let's click on that. All right, so here we can see that uh, Conrad is missing that one around the, uh, the share bonus there. So it dynamically added and removed those section there. Very handy. Okay, so as the final step, what we wanna do is we want to deliver this out to each one of the employees using Adobe Sign. And we can use those actions inside of Power Automate here as well. So if we click on edit, we're going to add an action at the end here, and we're going to search for Adobe Sign. Select Adobe Sign. Now there are a couple things that you're gonna to need to do. First, we need to upload the generated document to Adobe Sign, and then we need to send it out to each of the different uh, recipients and their manager. Um, so let's, uh, let's go about that. So the first thing we're going to go in here and we're going to uh, upload a document. So um, we can search up here and say upload and say upload a document and get a document ID. We're gonna give it a file name. Again, same as before, doesn't matter as much the file name as long as it's the right file extension for the file type. So in this case, we're gonna say file.pdf and the file content here is going to be uh, our output file content. Then we're going to say add an action we're going to say Adobe Sign one more time. And we're going to choose uh, create an agreement from an uploaded document. You can also use them from your library templates or from a URL. But again, we're creating this on the fly. So we're going to use the uploaded document. So if we say uh, agreement name, I'm going to call use the variables to add uh, some dynamic aspect to this. So it's, let's say employee first name, space, employee last name, space, bonus. For our document ID here, we're going to choose the document ID that came from the upload a document and get a document before, ID before. We, for our signature type, we're gonna choose e-sign. For our participant recipient, now we have two recipients in here. We have the manager who needs to sign, and then we have the employee that needs to sign. So we're going to actually go down here and click on this add new item here, because we're gonna add a second participant to this. So the first participant is going to be the manager, so let's search for email here. We're gonna choose the manager's email. They're gonna be the first participant, so they have to sign first before it goes to the next party, and they're going to be a signer. Now Adobe Sign does have a number of other roles that are available for you to be able to use. In this case, we're just using a signer. Once we do that, then we can uh, go in here and we're gonna choose our next participant who is going to be our employee. So let's search for email. We're gonna choose our email. They are going to be in the participant order. We want them to go second, and they're gonna be a signer there. All right, so we've set this up. If we click on save here, we should be able to now send this out, and each of the different parties are going to get a copy of the document for them to view and sign. So let's have a quick look. We'll uh, go test, we're gonna say test manually. It's gonna make sure that we have a connection to each of the different um, items there, and it's gonna start running. All right, so now if we switch over to my email here, we're gonna see that the emails are already coming out uh, John Echo Stone has received this bonus letter notification. So if we click on this link and we open it up in our web browser, we're gonna see that that date was automatically dynamically added into there. 
It's been personalized specifically for him. He has his uh, grant of shares. Congratulations to him. So Joe, who's the manager here, can go in here and sign the document. Um, now, Joe can also go in and draw his signature if he prefers. On my desktop, it's a little bit hard for me to draw with a mouse. I'm not that uh, creative with that. Um, but it places a signature on there. And when he cl says click to sign, it's going to route it to each of the other parties to countersign that document. Um, at the same time, um, while that's been happening, I had all the emails going to the same location. And we can see all of them have been sent out simultaneously here. So if we look at uh, the, the next one here for Mary, Mary will see the one that's personalized for her. Um, or Joe will see it first because it's uh, the manager, but Mary has her values that are inside of there. Now, if we look at the one that was for John Echostone here, this is the counter signature for John. If he then clicks on this link, he'll be able to see that personalized one there. You can see where Joe signed that document before, and John can just simply go in and sign. Wonderful. So there you have it. It sends out all the documents to each of the different parties that each of them are receiving a copy after they, they sign here. And um, it's uh, doing that all in bulk. So I was able to take an Excel spreadsheet, have all that information. It was able to dynamically route it to each of the different parties automatically. It was able to generate those personalized documents for each one of them so that I have all of those uh, available for me to be able to, to do that. And I didn't have to do any manual creation of each of those different, uh, those different documents there. So thank you for uh, watching the video. If you uh, like the video, please subscribe to Adobe Developers here on YouTube, or also uh, go check out the Adobe Tech Blog, where you can learn all sorts of different tips and tricks on how you can get to know using Adobe PDF services, Adobe Sign, as well as integration into our partners like Microsoft Power Automate. Thank you.